I'm sure you guys have heard of the track Universo. It's a very special track from Asterix and Rising Dust. And it's currently on number one here on the Beatport charts. But it's not only currently on number one. This track started here September 2020. And it almost never really left the charts. As you can see, it kind of like goes down and it goes up again, it goes down and it goes up again. And since basically September last year, it's more or less occupying the top 10 in the uh, Psytrance charts. So it's a very interesting track to look at and today I will completely disassemble it. So what I did basically, I analyzed the track, I looked which sections it has, where are like major changes in the track, I laid down where the kick and bass is, what the kick and bass is, the drums, uh, the leads and the FX. When we will look from like a bird's eye perspective on it, it's kind of like endless thing you can dig into. If you are interested in certain special topics, let me know during the video in the comments. I will pick out some points which I found personally very interesting. So keep on watching. There's a lot of interesting stuff in this track, which we will go into detail in this video. For all the guys who haven't heard this track, I will link up here to the YouTube video of the track so that you can have a full listen of it. So I will also put the buying link and the video in the description below. I will play through the intro now and I will stop at certain points which I want to show you and also I marked out the different sounds I was hearing out of the intro which is to be honest not a very easy task because um, there's a lot of sounds which I guess are made of sounds like tails from sounds and also sounds which kind of like morph or like pitched uh, you will see in a second so it's not like a hundred percent to nail that down but I think you will get um, which kind of sounds are used where and also I will explain a bit about the kick and bass uh, here so notice uh, we don't really have kick and bass here. The first time I think it gets a little bit more audible is here, but the distinction is not so clear as I will also show you in a second. And then it becomes like really audible here. So at bar 41, we hear the kick and bass, we can really hear it. And here, it kind of like increases and then it drops down, gets filtered out, and then we have the main uh, drop of the track. So that's what we will go over now. So let's start with the effects here. I want to lose a few words here. So we have this atmosphere, maybe it's the same, but it's kind of like rising in the end to give a little push here for the five bar section. So I think that's really nice. And notice those two strings here. I guess it's a sitar, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I just like pitched different pitched versions or from like an instrument. Maybe it's also like live played, but it's like, I guess like an octave or something of difference. So that's something um, you can definitely use on a lot of effects and I do as well in my tracks. Um, so if you have sample packs or stuff and you bring in effects, then you can bring it again in a different octave. So that's something interesting to notice, like a little detail. And let's go a little bit further. Um, one thing I want to mention here before we listen to it, um, all the sounds blend very well. So that's an advice I also want to give you. If you make your sound selection, it can be cool to have differences, but it can be also cool if you select sounds which really blend and morph into each other and kind of like are so similar. And I want to make actually a separate video in the next weeks about this because um, there is a special technique later in this track, which I used in one of my own tracks then, uh, which I guess um, he might have done. Um, but let's give a listen. Here is one thing I also want to point out. 
There's like this flute sound here. I'm not 100% sure to be honest. It sounds either like there is this flute sound made to a pad, like whatever, taking the reverb for example, and or a uh, kind of like violin type uh, sound, which, yeah, which has that violin character. So maybe it's a layer thing, or maybe it's a different sound. But nevertheless, what it does, it kind of like announces this flute sound before so that it doesn't come in as hard. It comes in very gentle and smooth. Also about the flute sound, notice that the pattern gets longer over time. It's very well blended, so you cannot really say where it really stops and where it kind of like gets into more like delayish uh, thing. Um, but it's not so important. What what is important that it's like very smooth coming in everything, which makes the track actually very, I would say, like digestible, beautiful in the beginning. So I think that's the thing of this intro. I think it gives you that pleasure, dreamy, a little bit vibes um, where you kid. I don't know what feeling you get, let me know in the comments, but for me it's something like a spring day or something where you, you sit on a tree and the first sun comes and it, or everything unfolds. So something like that is the, is the feeling I would get with that. And we have this harp or sitar strings. I think here's like a harp and then we get this um, sitar plucky strings, which are not really plucky, but more extended. And here there could actually be a second layer. I'm not 100% on that. As I said, it's very well uh, blended. Uh, so decide for yourself if you hear some vocalish element as well out here or not. I guess that's actually the magic of it that you also cannot like really 100% pinpoint those sounds. So it might be through some smart layering. It might be through the nature of um, this kind of like reverbs and stuff. Uh, it's a very interesting thing. So let me know in the comments what you see about this. And here I marked the bass becomes the first time audible really. I mean it's audible before but here it's like really present already. And I want to show you something just to prove a little bit my points. Uh, if we have the kick and bass here and if you hold command you can do this in this band so you can just select like a um, yeah, band of frequency. So check this out when I just select the bass here. Here I would say the bass comes more from the droney sound. When we are here with the bass, I think the first time really appears in the track. You can already hear that kind of like knocking from the, from the kick and here it becomes then really obvious. You can also hear the kick and the bass kind of like bouncing. That's about how I think the bass is. Maybe it gets infiltrated before and merges with the drone sound. That's things we cannot really find out or I couldn't find out. If you know a way, let me know. Um, but that's my best guess that we have this drone sound here, then the kick and bass filters in here and then comes kind of like audible, really audible over here somewhere. And now there comes something interesting. There comes this kind of like synth lead in here which repeats every eight bars and it comes in, I wouldn't say gated, it's more some modulation which makes it a little bit like 
frenzy is that the word like thing um, but notice for yourself and let me know the English word Here actually you can really feel that modulation. I want to point on one more thing. You see all the effects actually gone here. He leaves so much space for this lead to unfold, but the lead is not static. Notice how much it actually changes. It's it's kind of like, it's not like that you have like an LFO which changes it all the time, like every bar. It's like really changing over the whole course of this melody and also the notes kind of like walk down. So check this out when we when we start again. Here in that section, the low end really drops and then disappears, fades out. And then we have this little riser here in the end, which kind of like pushes into the new section. So we can see this here. It's kind of like a vocalish layer. So that's why I actually thought maybe that vocalish layer is already announced here in a weaker uh, version. But check this out, how the drop comes here. and then we drop full here. So that's really nice. He makes this kind of like extra space and also it's not just like up and down, it's kind of like drop and down, which kind of emphasizes this little eight bar section here. By the way, the track is, the arrangement is structured, not very, how you would say, like, like a formula. It's not like eight, 16 bars all the time. Of course, there's some structure in it, but the structure really follows the track. So I guess he really he really decided on the point, okay, here is something more needed or maybe here is uh, a little bit less needed. So as you can see, it's it has that kind of like structure, um, but on a lot of points, we have some extra bars which extend sections and really make them as long as they are required to be. Also, a, a quick note here about the track length is also not so usual. It's not like this seven minutes, 30, whatever track. Yeah, it's more like 10 minutes. That's quite long, actually, I, I guess. About the next section, I want to quickly explain you a bit about the kick and bass because I found very interesting what I've seen here. So it's that bouncy bass, boom, 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 boom. It comes from two things, especially. So the first thing is the rhythm. So we have here a kick and just a kick. There is um, no bass in my opinion. So if I just copy this kicks here and loop this, I personally can't really feel a bass. What I still find interesting that the kick goes up here. That's something might be coming from a lead. I don't really know. That's something I didn't find out. So if you have an idea about this, let me also know in the comments. Um, but this here is the bass. So look, it's like kick, bass, and the bass, let me quickly copy this one over here. And maybe we do the kicks over here. So that's the kick. Peak. And minus 25.3 here. And 
the base is a little bit lower peaking here in the low end, but it has a lot of space um, to unfold. It has quite a similar importance than the kick, especially the pattern makes it so bouncy, like this offbeat, 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 offbeat thing, where you have the kick and the bass alternating, like the fists of Captain Hook, you know, like kick, bass, kick, bass. By the way, that tattoo is pretty cool, I think. Let's look a little bit deeper into the bass, because there is something very interesting. The bass is a square bass. If we look at the waveform, you might not agree in the beginning that this is like a square base because it doesn't really look square but um, there's various things first of all I have a hardware synthesizer of a 303 if you put the square base in it also looks like that but anyways um, there is a few tricks how we can check this out so let's take a look here in the analyzer so the first fundamental harmonic peaks at A1 and the second one at D sharp. So what does this say us? The thing is, if you have a pure square tone and you go here in Serum into the wavetable editor, then you can see this here is our fundamental, this here is the second harmonic, this here is the third. And you can see a square wave basically misses every other slot. So we have always one on, one off, one on, one off. So that makes the sound of a square wave. So that's basically why we can tell from the frequencies that if we missed a tone here and we did miss one, so this is A1. So you can basically put A1 here in Pro-Q. And this is A2. Let me prove this quickly. So we have 110, which we haven't seen in the span. And this is 155 is D sharp three, more or less. I mean, it's not 100% exact, but you get the idea, I guess. Also, I made the effort to recreate a square base. And to be honest, I have never made a square base. And I did this like in half an hour to an hour, I guess. Um, so be with me, it's not the best one. So that's my version of the square base. Um, all I did, I modulated um, here the filter so i gave it like a little pluck in the beginning and i modulated here with lf01 the level uh, besides that it's just a square wave in which i reduced um, the first harmonic a little bit so that we don't have too much bass besides that i think yeah there's a little eqing which shaves off the top and a little bit of compression but that's not really making the thing, you know? So let's look at our bass here. And I imported the bass line from Universal as well. Yeah, I agree, it doesn't sound exactly the same. And I didn't put hours into remaking this, but it's more or less, um, I guess. And if we look in the Megascope here, it also has a quite similar shape. And to prove it even more to you, I bounce the space here. And as you can see, it kind of like falls the structure. It has this curve here, then it makes a little tail here, goes up, goes down, makes that thing here again, and goes down and goes up again. And it's quite symmetric, I would say, like both sides. Everything is quite balanced here. So that's more or less my um, little version of the square base, um, which I definitely can improve. But I just wanted to make the point here that this is a square base. And in my opinion, that really adds to the bounciness here. So one more thing I want to show you in this section is this little build up in the end, because I think it's also interesting. So what does the build-up do? We have the melody fading out here, or maybe it's also a different thing, but that's the thing which I notice all over the track. Everything is kind of like morphing and blending into sound, so it's uh, not always easy to say if it's the same sound. We have this, um, then I have this drum shots here as a little kind of like pre-announcement of the drop, and then we have this vocal riser.
and then we have the drums. Then we come to the next section in which uh, the snare starts coming in and a melody. So check this out at bar 91. And what I want to mention is another thing I noticed during the track here. It has either very large breaks, um, but it doesn't really have much missing here. So a lot of the transitions here are made like this, that there's only like one quarter note in which the bass is missing, but the kick is still there. So it's actually only an eight note pause here in between. And here again, notice how this mellow shot kind of like ends in the vocal after the transition. I think that's a very smart thing here. All those three sounds, the vocalizer, this melody and this vocal stab thing kind of like melt really nicely together. And I will show you in another video or short um, how I did this in one of my tracks uh, because I think there is some trick you can use for that. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel, subscribe so that you will find out all the little tricks. Here um, I will make special videos about it. So make sure that you put on the bell notification that you get notified uh, when those videos come out. And let me know in the comments if you have something you wanna know especially about. So this section has mostly a few grids, I would say. So basically sounds which repeat. They're always in the same position. Notice it's not crowded with it. So this is like four bars. So basically a lot of things repeat here in four bars. So we have those two shots here. So this kind of like reverse um, stab FM thing. And we have this vocal, which comes only one time here. And we have a few other one shots, but most of the stuff is kind of like repeating here. And then we have this, a few extra things here, like the, the little drum roll, the shiny glitters. And then the end again, like here we had, we have this kind of like rising up towards the end about, yeah, like maybe you could extend this because sometimes you don't really notice this in the beginning, also like four bars. So it's kind of like keeping this um, four bar pattern in here, we could say, and then it's rising over here. Same thing like we had in the intro, the bass drops. So I think that's a cool thing. You have, we have that kind of like high shot in the melody, which masks also the bass drop. So it's actually the same uh, principle at pickpockets uh, use. So uh, there's this little whistle you pay your attention to, and in the same moment, your bicycle is stolen. And the same goes here. We have that little mellow, which takes your attention, and at the same time, uh, the bass is dropped. So I think that's a very smart concept we can all take in our production um, if you don't already do this. Uh, also um, notice um, the asset kind of like increases also here over time. So uh, that's also something I wanted to note about this track. It's um, it has very fluid boundaries, I would say. So because the grids come in here, but the mellow already is in here. The last mellow already comes in in the intro and then goes out here. So, and we will notice this more during the track. So it's not so much like this concept 16 bars, something begins um, or is announced. It's more, a little bit more trans transcendent. Is that the word? Like dissolving boundaries thing. Okay, let's go back to business. <laughs> Okay. 
I want to mark something in this transition which I think gives a lot of power to the next section is we have to crash the first time and we have this screamy impact here. Did you hear that? It's like a very bright but in the background scream. Actually, I forgot to mark down here. There are some uh, steps again. So we have here in this position always like a step. Same thing here again as in the vlog before. We have this little clap impact which marks the break a bit more. And actually it's either a delay or it's coming again here. So that's why I made this here. Also the snare gets filtered. And we have the bass drop again, as I mentioned. Basically, we can say actually everything gets kind of like filtered out to go and bring the energy level down into the break here. This is really interesting. So everything goes down and then we have this drums or maybe it's the snare filtering into drums. As I said, a lot of sounds are morphing and it's not super easy for me at least to determine if it's like now a different sound, which is just so close to the other one in the beginning that uh, you don't really notice or if it's like really this sound taken over here. But what, it, what he does actually, and he will pronounce it here even more, he filters out the snare, then it's either the same drum or some more war drum thing, which then gets put into a short delay. And he has, has kind of like, as he goes into this block, he has again like this vocalish riser thing um, coming over here. And then he has a little downfall and then it goes into the next bouncy melodic section. Uh, let me show you quickly um, something about the drums. Um, this is a super fast sketch, like five minutes. It's not on tune, whatever, but I want to show you because I believe it's about this technique. So um, we have a drum, a snare, a hi-hat, whatever. Uh, you need to select like one which which sounds good in the end, so you need to give a few tries. What we want to have is we want to have like a huge um, transient here in the beginning and not too crazy. So you can basically shape this like this or even more. And then we feed this here into a delay and you need to play with the delay time. So the delay time basically alters the pitch of the drum. So if you have something about over 20 or 22 it will sound more repeated so you will first hear the delay and you will have like a high feedback and there's one thing either you put this not over 50 percent or you put this over 50 percent but then you need to adjust the timing because if you add the delay you will end up with shots which are not on your grid anymore. So you need to bounce it, for example, and put it on a grid, or you need to do things with track delay. But more or less, it sounds like this. And I just want to show you that depending on what pitch, okay, we do it like this, it you get different results. So as mentioned, if we are above 
about 22, I think it is, are, then we get this kind of like double sound. Then if we go down, okay, you're still a little bit like double-ish, I would say. That's the one way how you can control the pitch. The second thing is how you can control the pitch is if you have this, you can also, of course, alter the pitch here. So that's something you can do. I would recommend you to use a tuner. Then, then you can basically fine tune it either with the pitch, like changing the pitch slightly or fine tune it here and you will get kind of like a result mixture of the delay and the pitch you put in here. But that's, I guess, the principle he used here with some delay as well. And I think he made like a very interesting rhythm and melody out of this drums, because as you can influence the pitch, he can also make a melody out of this, even if it's originally an atonal sound. Notice here is like a sudden change in pitch and also there are some reverse shots in between. Maybe also reversed reverbs could also be, but something like that. So I guess uh, he pitched the drums. Maybe he made like a full scale or whatever, I don't know, ask him <laughs> on Instagram. And then he, that's, that's how I would probably do it. And then I would put it in a sampler or something and um, play with that or bounce it to audio and then mangle it more with stretching and reversing and bouncing out some tails and playing with that. But I think the idea is pretty cool and you can experiment with that to do this kind of like processing um, with the delays, with the pitch, maybe with the time stretching algorithms, um, bounce this out, bounce also the delay and reverb tails out and then create some funky rhythm or melody out of it. Here on this kind of like a lower pitch, we also hear the thing um, I discussed here if we go higher here, that it kind of like gives gives that double sound in there. At least I hear that. So they are probably lower in pitch. What also could be now as I move this could also be that they additionally are changing the pitch for example, like this. So that's something I might hear out there, but it's up for discussion if that's the case. And if you like the video so far, then please boop the like button. And if you can share this video with your friends or in your social media, that would really help me to grow this channel. And when the channel grows, I can make more and better videos for you guys. Then we have some groove change here. So we have some shakers coming in. Just to mention again about the arrangement, it's like eight bars here, eight bars. So um, if you analyze the track, you, I would recommend you to put this measure below here because it makes it easier. I mean, if you just go by the grid here, you think, oh, maybe he's changing after seven bars. But as the old section started like a little bit early, we also need to make our measurements a little bit early. Um, I think it could also insert here time markers and then your grid starts all over again, but it's a bit buggy I noticed in Ableton. So I would do this <laughs> if you analyze tracks like this. Then we have the shakers coming in.
So I want you to quickly show something on the transition of the next section because I find it really interesting. Is um, we have this vocalish noise sound announcing the vocals which come over here in the lead. So we have here the shakers and the vocals um, in the next part, which kind of like get the main lead thing here. And we have this noise here coming. I don't really mean that drum thing. Notice that there's kind of like a vocalish thing. At least I think I hear that. And then we have this kind of like tense noise, which turns into a rising vocal noise. Or gets layered with a vocal noise. That's something I don't really know. It starts with that tenseness, like if you would put like two notes um, separated by, for example, like 13 semitones. And then in the end, it gives that little vocalish push, which transitions into white noise and the main lead, which is also vocalish. So, and that's, I think, a really nice concept we follow all along this track that we have this really nice announcement and blending of stuff. So everything comes in very gentle and smooth, but still explosive uh, when we need the action with all the impacts and risers and you get the idea. Also here again, we have that very short breaks, only the bass is um, stolen from here. The only one bass note is missing. <laughs> Then we have this pad coming in here, going up and a little bit down, I would say. And then we go into the next section where we have a rhythm change. So the pitch drums are now removed. You hear, there's no pitch drums anymore here. And then we have this more ethnic vocal. And then again, the same principle, there comes this bright stab, which takes your attention. And then the melody comes in here, like a little melody thing. This which then becomes either a change in synthesis or a completely new sound, which is more like an acid mode. I guess it's two sounds because you can hear that swirly thing goes out here and the acid becomes more So it's hard to say actually I think this thing is kind of here as well but to be honest uh, it's quite blended and morphed everything so it's hard to say I mean if there would be like no sound and the melody comes in it would be easy to determine but as it kind of like goes hand in hand it plays with each other and gets like a counter thing and everything and maybe it's the sound itself so that's really hard um, to pick apart I guess. <laughs> I want to point out one more thing here. 
which is I think really important if you have those long melodic things and if you don't have a lot of elements is modulation and I will show this in another video about another track I analyzed a techno track where they do this very heavily so um, notice it's not the same synthesis over time so it's getting heavily filtered for example here it sounds more dark you need to really do something with the sounds if you want to sustain them very long and over sections it's disappearing here and we are building again some tension here so we have this um, noises here this kind of like hornish pad and I think that's a really nice trick it's not only noise here always it's kind of like this pads or reverbs or pads made of reverbs or whatever, which always announce what's coming a bit. So it's always melting into the new sound and makes it really smooth. It's not very obvious, I think. And now this next break build up part is really, really interesting. And I want to take a deeper look with you guys at this. So it's mainly determined by this strong acid synth melody. And I want you to notice you one thing, it has a lot of low end. So because we don't have really kick and bass running here, you can see this in a span. As there is no kick and bass, this new synth has loads of low end so if you cut your synths then you might not want to cut them in the break anymore or in this kind of sections where you don't have kick and bass it really has space to breathe you we could say the thing is we have this kind of like drums coming in here which go more dense and then go to a more rolling style roll faster 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 and then they get reversed and after that we are kind of like having a break of uh, silence and we are going into the kick and bass again. Also notice that the lead also goes faster. So basically you could say like the whole section gets like a speed up boost, like uh, it's ramping really up. So check this out. Oh yeah, it's rolls reverb. So basically the rolls go here. And they perfectly blend out into reverb. So they really, it's actually a techno trick um, that you have your synths and everything in the editing really pushing hard into the sense, into the reverbs or directly into a reverb here. So that everything kind of like dissolves into a big cloud of uh, sound and then you add some silence and then you drop. So that's a really cool concept, which I want to take also more into my tracks. Here, I'm not 100% sure because there's this one sound which plays with the acid and I think it's also derived from the acid sound. So I guess it's 
something bounced out of the acid sound which falls like a little bit down so we have this this really resonant sound and we have this kind of like answering to it it's kind of like more sawish type of sound i would guess um but I could imagine that it's made out of the same synthesizer with like different parameters and stuff. But that's something we can discuss in the comments. Let me know what you think about this. And then we get into uh, silence here to really suspense. <laughs> Notice how everything as I mentioned, goes heavily into reverb and everything comes in heavily from the reverb besides this acid. So we have this vocal line here, which starts appearing here, but from the reverb. That's, I think, a really nice trick because it's like if you would throw a smoke bomb in a club and then you exchange all the people in there <laughs> just just the music stays a little bit the same and once the smoke is away there's new new people new elements And the acid uh, kind of like goes out while the vocal goes in. So it's an exchange basically of um, sounds so that every sound or every main lead has its space and full uh, stage there. Same thing here, this kind of like vocalish um, noise here, riser. Here we can also have this, we have this downfall and then it goes over into a rise. Maybe it's the same, maybe modulated, maybe it's a different one <laughs> as, as uh, during the whole track, I can't really tell. And then we have this thing, which I think is a little bit interesting. We have that a little double kick here. So, so we have a kick here and then we have two kicks here. Also notice how in the arrangement elements come back. So we have this fire sound here, which we already had the first time as a one shot here in bar 102. Also the swirly thing has some similarities to this one. Also notice how this more FM-ish sound turns into an acid sound. I think that's really nice because it kind of like really makes the sound morph um, into another sound. Or maybe it's different layers of sound. Um, that's something I will need to find out for my uh, own production, for my own experiments. But I think it's very cool because it keeps your brain kind of um, interested. It's not like repeating the same sound over and over again. It's really evolving the sound.
So what I think also happens here, this sound, the more I think about it, is definitely not really from the asset, but it shares some properties, I would say. Um, it's, I guess, a sound which is a little bit more on the high resonant tone. Actually, you can really see the pitch moving. Yeah, there's another thing I want to mark for you guys. There's this vocal riser. In my opinion, it comes from the Ö, uh, from the um, break before. You know that uh, little vowels um, he put in and made like a melody rhythm out of it. And if you listen closely, I think it's the reverb of the Ö. Uh. Here happens the same thing again. We have that little drop, kick and bass gets filtered rapidly and then more smoothly. Notice there is nothing missing. It just goes like this. There's no break in between here. Interestingly, the if you look into the span, it's mostly the low end which is missing. He adds that low shelf filter immediately here and then the whole thing gets kind of like filtered out. I guess it only gets like a little bit filtered out from the highs and the rest is basically volume automation. So that's all what I found most interesting about this track. Uh, if you have some points I didn't um, go through and you find very interesting, let me know in the comments because I can make a special video about this if I figure out what's done there. I also can make a video about the square bass. I must say I'm not an expert, but if you liked the thing I have shown you what I recreated, I can show you how you can do that. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. And if you liked the video, then please boop the like button because that helps me to spread the video and to make it uh, available for more people. Also, if you can repost this video, it's really cool. And if you haven't subscribed, then please subscribe.